Hello, hello, happy Sunday, everyone. If you are finding me for the very first time, my name is Kim Dent, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I've been a demonstrator for 21 years, and I live in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Um, since last August, I have um, returned to doing in-person classes. I've done uh, classes, except for during COVID, um, for almost 20 years. So um, I'm happy to say we are back. We uh, stamp in a beautiful, um, renovated fellowship hall at my church, Zion Lutheran Church, in the lower level. And we are meeting um, this coming Friday and Saturday, November 4th, and Saturday, November 5th. I have three classes. The first one starts at 6 o'clock on Friday. And then the Saturday class, the first one is at 9 a.m., and then the afternoon one starts at 1 p.m. Um, Friday night's class is pretty full, but if you're in the St. Louis or Illinois area and you would like to join me, I would love to have you. Just contact me so that I know you're coming. The first time you come, you're absolutely free. Um, after that, it's $10. We stamp five cards. Um, all the supplies are included. They're cut and neatly organized. Um, and usually I have about 25 stampers at each class. So I'd love to have you join me. So hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, hello on this dreary Sunday. Hello, Mr. Dent. Hi, Mom. I saw you go by. Hi, Jill. Yay. Well, I want to remind all of you before we start stamping that um, the kit promotion that is going on will end on uh, tomorrow night um, at midnight. Um, if you have a wish list that is $99 or more, um, you want to talk to me because joining is so easy and it's so fun. And uh, it right now it's $99, but you get to pick $155 worth of product. So that's $56 free. It ships to you free. You get to pick whatever you want. You get to be a part of my team. We meet every month at Zion Lutheran Church and have a blast. Right now, I have about 40 women on my team. Not all of them join me um, every month, but usually it's about 15 uh, stamp women that we have stamping um, on my team. Um, you get a 20% discount automatically, and it is a whole lot of fun. If you want to be your own best customer, Stampin' Up! says that you can do that. So that's awesome. The other awesome thing is um, if you sign up today or tomorrow, you would not need to place a dollar's worth of orders till the end of March to stay active. So let me repeat that. If you would join today, to stay active, to be on my team, to get all the perks of being a demonstrator, you would not need to place any orders till March 31st, till uh, the, um, and then and then if you decide at that time that you don't want to uh, be an active demonstrator, then you just go back to being my customer. So I would love to talk to you about it. The time is running short, so you wanna do it before tomorrow night. Um, but if you have any questions, give me a call or send me a text, send me an email or comment in this Facebook Live. Or I also have YouTube. My YouTube channel is Stamping with Kim Dent. I also have a page, a business page, Stamping with Kim Dent. So if you're finding me on YouTube or on my business page, um, it is Sunday, October 30th. And um, like I said before, this promotion only goes till October 31st. So stay tuned. All right. Hello, everyone. You're ready to stamp. Okay. Miss Shirley's ready to stamp. Um, so what I'm going to do, we're going to do um, two cards. One is with the uh, brand new um, fitting frames and florets. I'm going to, I have a uh, flyer printed out that I'm going to show you. It's absolutely beautiful. Plus, I have all the products to show you. We're going to make one card from that and then another quick and easy card that you, you don't want to miss because if you mass produce Christmas cards, this card is a must-have and it's just with a couple of different um, products. So hold on one second. I'm going to sync my laptop. How is everyone? Did anyone stamp this weekend? 
Rick and I had a very busy weekend. Um, yesterday was jam-packed. We had a wedding of a wonderful couple at Zion yesterday afternoon, and then we got to go to the hockey game last night. So it was a busy, busy, busy weekend. But today and yesterday morning, I've, I've gotten in a lot of crafting, so that's always fun. And today was a good day. My goodness, it was it is dreary out there and so dark already. I'm not ready for the um, time change. Are you guys? Ooh, I don't like it. Oh, oh, Carol, yay. Carol, did you stamp Christmas cards or Thanksgiving cards? What have you been stamping? What have you been stamping? Oh, oh hold on. What have you been stamping? There we go. There's always some, something. Okay, hold on one second, and I'm going to show you this beautiful card. Um, so give me a sec. I'm going to flip my camera around. Let's see. Oh, wrong way. Sorry, girls. There we go. There is, oh, this is my website. If you're just uh, finding me, this is how, this is my online store. This is how you can find out about me. Um, you can find out when I have classes and you can also place orders with me here at this, at my website, my online store. Um, if you're placing an order that is $150 or less, please use this code and that will help me out. But if your order is $150 or more, do not use this code because I want you to receive the freebies, the Stampin' Rewards. So all you have to do um, to receive freebies is, or Stampin' Rewards, they're technically called Stampin' Rewards. Um, you have to place a $150 order all at one time or more, and then um, they were Stampin' Up! rewards you with freebies, perks. Yay, Carol. I am so, I know it's, here we are, not even um, Halloween, but I just cannot quit making Christmas cards. Hello, Miss Valerie. Thanks for tuning in. All right, I am going to show you this card that I made. I hope you like it. It is made with the um, products from the new promotion, the fitting frames and florets. And this is kind of fancy for me. Do you all see the gold on there? This is with gold foil. And then um, the, oh, I was gonna look this up. I wanna say it's, mm, it's there's a pretty, I'm going to call it the pretty flower embossing folder. I might, if I get a chance, I'll look it up. This is in the annual catalog. I'm going to show you when we get going. I want to show you first the um, flyer. So the products are made, or the card was made with products that are only available through this flyer. You're not going to find this. Oh, you can find it online, but you're not going to find it in one of our catalogs. So they brought out this Fitting Florets collection, and I'll show you what it is. It is the Frame Florets stamp set, the Flame, <laughs> this is a tongue twister, Frame Floret dies. There's an additional stamp set called Framed and Festive. There's these very pretty adhesive back swirls, which we're going to use tonight, and then this beautiful DSP. And you can order it separately, or if you choose to save 10%, if you want to order the stamp set and the dies, which are amazing, you save 10%. So the bundle is $54, but you can always order any of these individually. The one thing that I want to remind you, or I want to tell you, first of all, is... Um, this, the framed and florets and the and the framed and florets dies, they will carry over into our next catalog. They are not going away. But these amazing products, the adhesive bag swirls, this cute framed and festive Christmas stamp set, and then this beautiful paper that I'm going to show you will go away. Um, it is while supplies last also. But um, the, the promotion will run through January 4th. So... If you love what you see, 
Okay, I'm gonna show you, the, here's the DSP. Gorgeous, isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> if you love flowers, oh my goodness. And there are dies that cut out, I believe it's this piece and maybe this piece, this piece, no, this piece, this one, which we're using today. So I stamped and colored um, and used the dies to cut out mine, but there's a die that coordinates with this and then this one. There's the flip side. Ah. And then more pretty flowers. Reminds me of a little girl room. And then a fun, funky pattern. This is the piece that I'm using and I've actually, I'm in a um, swap with a bunch of demonstrators and I had to make 21 cards. So this is the card that I'm gonna, that I made tonight for all of you that I'm making to send away. So I only have this much left. I had to really pay attention to my numbers and how I cut it, but I love it. Do you see, I'm not sure if this is, you know, I don't think it's quite like a mistletoe, but it's definitely got a white berry. And then I, we color, I'm gonna color it and make it like a, more like a holly berry, even though the leaves really don't match, but. I thought it looked fun. And then more pink, Blushing Bride. And then this one, gorgeous, blues. And then a soft, subtle, soft succulent side. This one I love. I love, I don't know, it's so fun. I think it's like a starry sky and a balmy blue. Um, and I'm not sure about the pink. I'll have to look on the back. And then there's that pretty bright pink. And then we all love gingham, or I think I think we should all love gingham. And then the flip side, blue flowers. So this paper will go away. Um, oops, here we go. Oh, here, I can look. Do you all know this trick on the back? Not trick, but um, on the back of the cardboard that holds your DS, packs of DSP, it has the name of the, the DSP, and then the colors, Balmy Blue, Blushing Bride, Crushed Curry, Evening Evergreen, Night of Navy, Polished Pink, and Soft Succulent. So that's the pink that I was not sure of. That's always a good res reference. I love the paper too, Vicki. All right, I'm gonna bring out the kit, which is, to make the card, it is, the card base is Evening Evergreen. It is four and one fourth by 11, scored at five and a half. Then you need a piece of cherry cobbler. Thanks, mom. Cherry cobbler, this is four inches by five and one fourth. Um, the name of the DSP, Fitting Florets. This piece is one and one half by four and three fourths. Piece for the inside, basic white, four by five and one fourth. This is the piece that you uh, would, you're gonna stamp, we're gonna stamp the flowers on with memento and color them in with the blends. Three by three. And then a layer to frame the DSP. This is evening evergreen, one and three fourths by five. And then you need one piece of basic white, three by three and three fourths. And then the gold foil, which I don't know if you can pick it up, but it is so very pretty. It's kind of reflecting in the, the light of the camera, but it's gorgeous. Three, three by three and three fourths. I'm gonna show you now the, the die set. So the frame floret dies are so awesome. We had used to carry ovals and then they took them away and now I'm so glad that these are back. So here you can see the, this is an oval with a heart. So cute. And then here, these are, I don't know, I don't wanna say, I can't think of the word, freestanding. Like these images, these leaf and ferny looking images, they would cut out cardstock without being stamped on. There's nothing, no stamp that matches these three. But then these three, we do have images that um, you can stamp, or like I showed you with that, the um, DSP, these will cut out some of those images. And then another one. 
This is another oval or frame. And then some more images that we can stamp and cut out or cut out from the DSP. This is the one that I use tonight. It's just got like a little, um, I don't know, it's almost like stitching. And then this is the one that I used for the flowers to cut it out. The cool part about all of this one, and I believe this, well, I'm not sure about, I know this one, I'm not sure about the heart. Um, when I ran this through the um, stamp and cut and emboss machine, it cut out first my, or it cuts it all together. It cuts out the frame. So I ran 21 pieces of foil. It also cuts out this oval that's on the inside. So I've got a bunch of um, gold oval pieces. So it does it all, and it does it all at once. And I'm gonna tell you this, with my stamp and cut and emboss machine, I was able to do two Two, set, two pieces at a time with this die. So for those of you who like to mass produce cards and need 50 of, you know, 50 of them, the foil, it cut out two pieces at a time. So then the next thing I did was I cut my white piece. So I have 20 white frames that I'm gonna use on, you know, some other project. But um, it's nice that it cuts out the frame and then the oval on the inside separately. Does that make sense? Hello, Angela. Thanks for tuning in tonight. This is the card that I'm talking about, Angela. This is the one that I'm gonna demonstrate for you. And um, so anyway, I think we'll get a lot of use out of it. I'm excited that the, this set of dies is gonna carry over into the next, um, the next catalog. And I've already done the cutting ahead of time just because I don't want you all to be here all night long. So I'm gonna pull this aside and we're gonna start assembling. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy bone folder, give it a nice crease, and then oh, let's see. Oh, I've got it right here. This is the embossing folder that I used. I think you can see it. It reminds me of wallpaper. And I when I was like thinking about what I wanted to make for, um, or how I wanted to make the card, it just looked too plain. I kind of had an idea in my head. It looked too plain to have this um, nothing on it, you know, put together with the DSP and the oval in the middle. So I came up with the idea to emboss the piece. And if you look closely, this flower kind of replicates the flowers that are in the embossing folder. So I thought it was a good match. Even though, you know, I think if you see this like in other colors, you probably think spring or summer, but I like the way that these images coordinates. Man, I'm all about the matchy matchy matches this. So that's how I came, I made the decision to do this embossing folder, which is in our annual catalog. And I think it's called something, hi Sally. Sally might know the name of it. Sally, do you know the name of this embossing folder? I think it's called something flowers. Oh, thanks, Gail. Okay, I've put my adhesive on the back, my stamp and seal. And then the next thing I'm gonna do for you is, do you see, this is how it, when I cut it, which is uh, one, and, one and a half by four and three fourths, I saw these berries on here and I thought, well, since it's gonna be a Christmas card, let's bring in my Cherry Cobbler Blend and really matchy match it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you what I did and, whoops, I think I used the nub end of it. Pretty, thank you, Brenda. Pretty Flowers is the name of the embossing folder. Girls, if you love it, it's in the annual catalog. So see what I did? I just colored these, kind of like, do you remember when I colored uh, the pumpkins on the Celebrate Everything um, 
um, DSP from um, the Halloween card that I did. So I colored these in, all except for the ones that were gonna be under the frame. So I'll set that to the side. And then I'm gonna take my, look like I got a scrambled mess over here. I'm gonna take my Evening Evergreen, which is one and three fourths by five. So I wanted to pull in a little bit of the DSP. And then with this piece, this remember is gonna be the piece that I ran through the second time to make the oval. Which looks like this. <laughs> time delay. <laughs> this is my oval and I'm going to bring in Evening Evergreen. Oh, I didn't even show you girls the... So there's the stamp set frame florets. This is the one that's going to carry over um, and you can see the images. There's the image that I stamped that's on this card, but it's got um, wishes for a beautiful birthday. Thank you with all my heart. So lucky to call you friend. For a special person on a sp special day, just a little, rem little reminder you are loved and celebrate along with the pretty flowers. This is the one that I love. It's so fun because of the fonts, how the there's, you know, like a um, big swirly font and then the, the straight line. So, uh, you know me, I love the fonts. Framed and festive will go away. So this one is Merry Christmas, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly from our home to yours, from all of us. Noel, may the season be filled with peace and joy, which we're using, and then have yourself a merry little Christmas. Ah, love it. So this will go away. This will go into the next catalog. And I'm going to bring in <clears throat> Evening Evergreen. And I like to tell, this is an in color. And um, this is one of those colors when I first saw it, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm never going to use it. It almost looks like it's like almost so dark that it's like black and I use it all the time. <laughs> Stampin' Up knows what they're doing, girls. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Allison. And I'm going to close this up. So this piece, I just took my, um, stamp and seal. Oops, my sticky stamp and seal. And I positioned it, I made sure it was straight, positioned it um, kind of in the center. And then with this gold foil, I used that die and that's what it looks like. And for this one, I took my handy dandy Tombow multi-purpose glue and you only need a tiny little bit. I'm gonna go all the way around. And I, oop, I'm gonna try to stay on the inside as best that I can. But like I said, it's, um, it's just a tiny little bit that you need. So there's that. And. get it on there and I really don't want like that background to, or I don't guess not the background but I don't want like that cherry cobbler showing through so but it does look how nice and neat it fits on there this auto I also thought of this after I started making them this would have been pretty up on those um adhesive strips you know that it was would have been kind of popped up but I thought of that after I started making the cards so Okay, the next thing um, I'm gonna do is with my basic white, I'm gonna bring in Memento, and because I'm coloring with the blends, uh, that's why I'm using Memento. And here's my stamp. Oh, and you know what my rule is, if 
you stamp with photopolymer, you've got to use a pierce mat. My pierce mat is on top of my copier. Oops, I realize I'm not in the camera. There you go. So it looks like that. When you stamp it, I'm gonna color it in. And the first thing I did was I took, oh, sorry girls. Oh my goodness, I'm shedding. Um, I took the, this is dark, dark soft succulent. And I colored in the centers of the flowers. And then I took, oh, I took it again and I took the brush tip and I'm only gonna do part of this for you. I just, this is how I color, like just like you would, like if you were in the sixth grade. <laughs> I put, you know, down the middle of that, the vein. And then the beautiful thing about our alcohol markers is it picks up because they are alcohol they blend and they pull in like that shade it, it does the shading it's a it's a beautiful thing it does the shading for you so I don't know any fancy artistic techniques I just this is pretty much how I color all the time I stamp I let the stamp do the work for me so that's why I say, like when my friends say, oh, I can't color, I'm like, oh yes, you can. It's just like when you were in the sixth grade or fifth grade. I use the brush tip for um, these skinny little flowers. So you can see, or not flowers, sorry, leaves. And I took, I did something a little differently this time. I usually would take and go over and color it in with light. Oh. Thanks, thanks, Sandy. Um, but you know how I usually color like the whole image in light and then I go over with it in dark and then I go back over in light? Well, I had 21 of these to make and so I'm like, I know there are demonstrators or stampers, not necessarily all demonstrators, but they start with the dark, the dark blend and they just add their details that way. So can you see? Just added a few outlines and then I'm gonna go back in. And on this, you know, I like to use, some people like will only use the brush tip end of their their blend or their marker. I use both. It just depends on the size of the, the image. And then I'm just blending. I shouldn't have it on top of my pierce mat, but that's okay. Blending it in till those lines disappear. That's the beauty of the blends. And see how simple that is? The one the only thing like you want to make sure um, because it's an alcohol marker, it will bleed. So I try to stay inside of the lines that as best as I can, but there is a um, color lifter that we carry that um, it's like a little bleach pen that if I would have gone outside of the line, I take it and I can um, kind of work it, work out the color. And um, so through the magic of television, <laughs> on a time delay. Oh, no, where is it? Oh, maybe I didn't do it. Oh my goodness, I know what I was gonna do. I was gonna color this in. Oh, oh poo. Okay, hold on, girls. Let's see. Let's finish this and then I'll run it through. I've got my machine right here. Sorry about that. I thought I had an extra one, but I, I realized I never went back and colored. I wish I had some music to play so y'all could listen. <laughs> well, okay, one more flower and then we'll be done. I 
Oh, and then I saw these little berries and I wanted them to match. So I put a little teeny dot of dark cherry cobbler. Oh, thanks, Shirley. Sandy and my first sample that I made, the prototype, <laughs> that one um, I didn't use the soft succulent to color it in. I just had it like a you know dark cherry cobbler and then I looked back at it and I thought it needed something. So that's when I decided to pull in the soft succulent, dark soft succulent. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is Wink of Stella. Gotta love the Wink of Stella. Put some sparkle on it. Little dabble, do ya? <laughs> okay, then we're gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna pull in my machine. Let's see if I can get it in the camera. I don't do this very often because of the way my, my camera is set up. Um, hold on, no, I need to get. I hope it doesn't jiggle too much. Okay. We're almost there, girls. Oh, thanks, Vicki. Okay, hold on, I gotta scoot it over. <laughs> there we go. cut it. I know Gail Brock is probably, Gail loves to fussy cut, but here we go. I could have fussy cut it, but I had the dies and everything set up, or the, the machine set up right next to me. Ah, oh, so pretty. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side and bring in some dimensionals. Oops, one just dropped. Oh my goodness, that one didn't come off right. Oh, you know what, Jill? <laughs> what you just saw me use, that was a mag... You are so observative. <laughs> That's, that was our magnetic um, plate that is defective. Um, or some of them were defective. Fortunately, the one that I've been using, which I love dearly. Oh my goodness, girls. I, I hope they come out with a new one. It's, they've, uh, that's the second one that they've tried um, to produce and they put it in our catalog even if you look, um, but they've had problems with it so they pulled it, um, but thankfully mine is still working and I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, um, so hopefully they're working on that now, Jill, and uh, someday we hopefully will have that because it makes cutting with your dies uh, so easy. All right, I'm gonna bring in, um, these are the gold adhesive back swirls. Oh, and I don't know what, what happened here. Can you all see me okay? There we go. I pushed something on my computer. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna show you these up close. And I, told at my class last month 
The cool part about these is they're so detailed, but they are flat. So for my Stampin' Friends who are, um, they don't like to, you know, have poofy cards to put in the mail to their friends, um, this is a perfect solution. Okay, I'm going to use three. So these will go away. I have so November 1st, which is Tuesday, these become available. If you're wanting to place an order or you want me to place your order, let me know. Um, because I have a whole I have a feeling that these little be beauties are gonna go away fast. <laughs> they're so fun and they're so cool because they're flat, but they they pack a big punch because they, they just sparkle. So there's our first card, done and done. Let me put this away and I'm gonna show you the second one. First, I'm gonna show you these. This is what I've been working on all, all afternoon when I said I was crafting 21 of these beauties. I still have to put the, the little swirls on them. So my little hand is a little crampy. <laughs> Um, adhesive back swirls. Oh, yeah. Waiting. Me too, Peggy. Waiting for uh, November 1st. Um, gold adhesive back swirls. And I want to say they are $8. Eight, they're on the, uh, where's my flyer? They are eight fifty for seventy five pieces, girls. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> so yeah, love, love, love them, and they look so pretty with the gold foil. All right, this is uh, the next one I want to show you, or that we're gonna make. I am not taking any credit for it because it is, um, I got the idea from a very wonderful demonstrator. Her name is Susan Campfield. And I hope you can see how very pretty this card is. Ignore this ink blob right here. So do you see it? It looks, I think I'm looking at my screen. It is prettier in person than than um, on the camera. So this card, thanks to Susan Campfield, I love it too, is made with something that I'm obsessed with. <laughs> it's the Snowflake Vellum, Cheryl. <laughs> it's the Snowflake Vellum, and it is found on page 40. It's 10, you get um, six sheets. That's I've used so much of this piece. It's six sheets and you get, so this one is like iridescent and then this is flocked. And then here's the snowflake iridescent and then the snowflake flocked. I think I'm on my fourth pack <laughs> and I've used up almost all of it, girls. I love it. I love it, I love it. So for this card, you need, I, and if you, that's what I started saying earlier. If you are in need of a beautiful card that you want to send out um, to your friends, this this is so easy to do. I don't see my bone folder. <laughs> um, where is it? Well, let's see. This is this is thick white. It is five and a half by eight and a half, scored it four and one fourth. It is your new favorite and mine, Cheryl. And then you need a piece of smoky slate. This is three and three fourths by five. And of course, that's not gonna stay down. <laughs> um, and then you need a piece of basic white, and I'll tell you why I did this. This is um, three and a half by four and three fourths. And then your snowflake vellum, flocked vellum or iridescent. What a, they're both beautiful on this card. I should have done one one way 
and one, this is three and a half by four and three fourths. So the reason that I did another piece of white, you know, you're, um, it's because I thought this piece of snowflake, snowflake vellum um, looked prettier on top of the white instead of on top of the base. It is very elegant. I shouldn't say that. It probably looks, I don't know. For some reason, I thought I needed, I needed this. So, so I'm sorry, I took the measurements off, but three and a half by four and three fourths. Smoky Slate is three and three fourths by five. And then the white is three and a half by four and three fourths. Then you need one piece of basic white. And this is to do your um, snowflakes and the piece that, the piece that you emboss on. So this is basic white three by three. I'll let that sit there for a second. So the stamp set that I used, um, just the words, is Let It Snow. But if you tuned in last week, um, the same snowflake card that I made, it was from Joyful Flurry. I love this. I love this. I love this. I didn't think I needed another snowflake stamp set because I've got a ton, but aren't they beautiful? So let it snow is what we're using from the stamp set, but it's gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Go on Pinterest. There are tons and tons of ideas. Joyful flurry. And then the dies are called frosted flurry. And oops. I'm in need of my magnetic sheets. Um, these cut out the images. This is like what I said about that ivy or fern. This is a freestanding snowflake. These are gorgeous. And then there's that big banner. So I talked about this last week. I'm gonna talk about it again. After, you know, snowflake season is over, um, you'll still have these two amazing dyes that are, I call them like banner dyes. Um, so extra little, adds a little, adds a little, um, pack to the punch where you can get more buck, more money for your dollar, I guess I want to say, because you can use these all through the year. And then, so there's the little one that we use for let it snow. And then they, it came with two of these like freestanding. All I had to do was put, put them on the white cardstock and it cut out the beautiful, snowflakes. So those three are the, the dies that I used. And then I forget who said it last week. They, someone said, um, you know, snowflakes, especially, maybe it was Sally. Um, they're so, snowflakes are good for happy, or birthday, winter birthdays. And I also said, um, there's, has been your there have been years where I did not send out Christmas cards, and then in January when things calm down, then I send out a Happy New Year card. So snowflakes are good for that too. All right, let's pull up these pieces, the measurements. Set this to the side. I'm gonna take. Oh oh, I'm gonna take the vellum, snowflake vellum, and I had at my last class we used. That uh, we use the iridescent piece of this, and one of my my stampin' friends, my customers, said we were. I was talking about the ways to adhere vellum to cardstock without it showing because vellum is um, beautiful, but then you you know you go to use it, and then the adhesive shows in the. And so she had an Elmer's school glue, a simple little school glue stick. <laughs> So thank you, Marge Zubler. And she just said, it doesn't show. And she was right. So I'm stocking up on the school glue. I'm going to be using vellum more often. This, Sandy, this is it. Oh my goodness. This is so easy. If it wasn't for me gabbing, we would have been done five minutes ago. This, the vellum with the white gets layered onto the smoky slate. The smoky slate gets dimensionals, unless you don't like poofy cards. <laughs> and then you don't have to have the dimensionals, but I like them. Yeah, 
I have to give all the credit to Susan Canfield. If you are um, on YouTube, go look her up because she is amazing. Let's see, and then I'm gonna decide which direction I want it to go. Still haven't, oh, found my bone folder. Yay, that's underneath a the note. <laughs> there we go, golly. Makes a big difference, especially with the thick cardstock. And then I've been putting these in the clear envelopes so they don't get lost. So I'm just going to take a dot of glue on like each of the little points. I'm gonna see if I can pick it up with my acrylic nails. <laughs> Let's see, where should I position it? I'm gonna do one here. Yeah, this is definitely a quick and beautiful card. Don't you love them when they come together? There's not a lot of work behind it. And really, well, I'm gonna emboss the Let It Snow, but you would not even need to mm -hmm, do that. Let's see, where is this gonna go? Kind of wanted it in an empty spot, like not over the flocking. Set that there, okay. So the um, three by three piece, this is what I cut the snowflakes out of, but I'm just gonna emboss for you really quick. So you want to always have an embossing buddy, takes the static out, then you're going to take a Versamark, Versamark is the glue that keeps the um, powder, the embossing powder on, and I stamped it and I don't see it really well, but wait till I shake it on this. Now I'm going to cover up my Versamark. Thanks, Shirley. Oh, and I can see I pressed a little too hard. So here's the brush that um, is damping up. I don't know, I heard someone say, and maybe sh that this was for the tray, you know, to get the, the um, embossing powder out of the tray, which where is mine? It's close by. Um, but I like to use it to get the little flex. Like, did you see how it pulled off that itty bitty bit where it was, um, I had pressed too hard and then covered that up and I'm going to bring in my heat tool. This heat tool is a, um, the granddaddy of them all. This I think was my original heat tool, guys. My other one is upstairs with um, my um, my supplies from my stamp class on Wednesday. So I just decided I'd pull in the 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 granddaddy here, and it just takes a minute. See how pretty that is. Don't you, I love this tool too. And then I took the um, banner die and I cut it out. Magic of tele television, there you go. And then it also gets dimensionals. And usually when you emboss, um, because you know, you're putting heat on it, especially if it's a larger image, this one not so much, I always use either extra adhesive or um, extra like dimensionals, 
went all the way across the back there just because sometimes with heating it will um it will warp the cardstock a little bit let's see let's put it right here and then the last thing is ah oh, adhesive bag sequins and gems gorgeous gorgeousness and I think this kind of makes the card well it doesn't the DSP makes the card um, I think on this one I use the fresh the sample I use the fresh freezer not these are coastal cabana some colored co coastal cabana sequins so I'm going to use them So there's Fresh Freesia, Coastal Cabana, and I'm not sure about this one, but it is beautiful. I just can't quite figure out what to use these, this shape with, but I've used a lot of these. If you have any ideas, please pop them in the comments. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. There's your two cards. This one, quick and easy. This one, beautiful card that... Uh, you know, for those special people, families and friends in your lives. But this one too, but it just, you know, it looks like it takes a lot of work, but really it doesn't, nice and easy. All right, both, both, you like both cards, Jan. Thanks guys, I'm gonna flip it around. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I appreciate all of you. I uh, just want to remind you, if you're thinking about joining, you want to do it by tomorrow at midnight. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me, Facebook me, email, text. Um, I do all of those. I would love to have you join my team. Have a wonderful week, everyone. God's blessings. Bye-bye.